Hello. Welcome to Wednesday. Middle of the week, getting some projects done, doing some fun things. And uh, today we're gonna create some wings. My name is Chelsea Evans and I'm the owner and artist on Apple Blossom Way. And uh, today we are going to, I'm going to teach you how to make wings using Redesign with Prima molds, okay? I did this on a dresser. Um, Oh my gosh, it's been almost a year ago. And I made some really cool wings that came down the front of the dresser, all using uh, various molds from Redesign with Prima. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I make the mold, what products I use, and uh, then we are going to make our own um, wing art. Hey Lisa, how's it going? And please say hi as you guys come on, tell me where you're from. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, if you watch the replay, I'll answer later. <clears throat> I do have all of the products that I'm using listed out and I will copy and paste them into the description when we're finished. All right. Hey Shelly, how's it going? So what you guys are gonna need, okay? You definitely need some gloves. I like nitrile gloves. Uh, they are my favorite because they're very, they have different thicknesses and so that you can use them more than once, which is really nice. Um, I am going to be pouring molds into from resin today. There's a lot of different materials you can use in the molds, but I really like the resin because it's so strong and durable, um, and it will give me a cool, like a really nice sharp image for these, okay? So the molds I use, I use a bunch of different ones, but I basically grab molds to me that felt like um, they would look like feathers so I could create the wings. So the peacock one, this is called Regal Peacock. I really like this one because it kind of has that, you know, wing look, but they're feathers. Uh, this one is Monstera. It's actually a leafy one, but this looks a lot like a feather to me. So I liked that one. Uh, any scrolly, any kind of scrolly molds will work really well because they kind of feather off like they're a feather, like they could go on wings. Even this one, I did some of this one because it kind of feathers off, see that at the bottom? And I don't mind adding some florals into it. I think that would be really beautiful. Okay, uh, there's another one, and I, I can't remember the name of this one. I think it's Wings and Cogs. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, but um, it has different wing molds on it, so you can actually use more of like an actual wing look if you want the feather. Um, and then the other one that I used just for this one is, um, well, I'll add the name when we're done, but this one is actually a vine, kind of like a leafy vine stencil. And I thought this would look really beautiful um, because today we're going to make black like wings, like they've been um, burned or like a darker feel, a darker look. Okay, so that's why I thought this design and shape was really cool because it almost looks a little bit more um, like a crow, like crow feathers, how they kind of come out and they're really long and skinny. So I, that's why I decided to use this one. Hi, Veronica, how are you? And I apologize, you guys, I'm a little bit um, under the weather. And so if I sound funny, that's why. <laughs> okay, the resin I'm going to be using today is, um, is, is casting resin. Okay, so there's lots of different types of resin. Um, I'll show this to you. You guys can buy it on like Amazon in a two pack or anywhere like that. Um, but casting resin cures very rapidly and it's going to dry white. Uh, so you can add color into it. So I added some like alcohol ink and mixed it really well into it before I poured this. So you can see one of the molds that's all pink. Um, you can do layered, where you can do one pour, let it dry, and then add another pour at the bottom. So you can kind of do that. There's like a blue. So I just did a bunch of different ones, but if you don't mix any color into it, the resin's going to come out white like this, okay? That's what the molds look like, all right? So <clears throat> the fast casting resin is going to um, dry and cure really quickly. So I, it's the perfect one for me to demonstrate and show you guys right here while we're live. Uh, if you use a different type of resin, like a countertop resin or anything like that, it's going to take at least um, overnight or sometimes a full day before you can remove the molds. And then sometimes they're like kind of sticky. So quick, the casting resin works the best. All right. And it's nice and easy to use. So what I do 
is I'm just gonna take two little plastic cups. I like see-through ones so I can see through so I can get pretty even um, amounts. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so you wanna try and mix it very evenly, okay? Uh, and then I have my mold ready here. This one I'm gonna use the border lace mold to show you. They come in a package like this. This was designed by CC Restyled from her last release through Redesign with Prima. And this is what it looks like. It's a really beautiful um, kind of a lacy border. These look great on drawers, on the sides of dressers. Uh, lot of, you can put it around a mirror. That would be really beautiful. All right. And then I've got a spoon for mixing. So you don't have to mix these a ton, which is really nice. I'm just gonna pour even amounts. If you have measuring jars, that's ideal. Um, but we're just gonna do a little bit, so I'm just gonna quickly kind of show you. I'm not gonna put any color in it so you guys can see what they look like. If you don't add color, you just want even parts. That looks pretty even. Okay. You can even leave a mark. You can measure it, pre-measure it, and leave a mark on cups. But I just like these because they're inexpensive and I can just chuck them at the end. You can get a big bag of them at the dollar store for like nothing. Okay, and then you're gonna mix these two together. So I just slightly mix them a little bit separate. Then I'm gonna pour them together in one thing and mix it. Now, usually with other types of resin, for those of you pour, you know, then you pour into another cup. But for these tiny projects, like these little molds and this casting resin, it's so easy to use. I don't have to be um, exact with everything, like when you pour a large resin, or if any of you do that, okay? So you just wanna mix it really well. You only have to mix this one for uh, like 10 to 15 seconds, just a really short amount of time, okay? This is what it's gonna look like all mixed, and it's gonna be nice and watery. Okay, so we're gonna pour this, and I'm just gonna pour it right into the mold. I try to get, I try to make it so I don't get any, any excess, like pouring out of the mold, but if I do, I can either wipe it back, or I can, that looks pretty good, um, pull it out when it's almost all the way cured, but not quite and I can break off any excess, like if I over poured or it went on the edges or whatever. Okay, another thing you can do that makes it really easy, especially if you're working with small areas, <clears throat> and that used all of that, okay? Especially if you're working with small areas, uh, you'll want to, you can use like a little syringe, all right? So you can scoop that up in the syringe and just syringe it in if you wanna do that, and then that makes it a little bit easier for smaller areas, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside, and I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what other projects, products we're gonna to use today, and this is going to cure right in front of us. So I'll just set this up, let's see if I can just kinda of keep it in the screen, there we go. So you guys can still see it, but you're gonna see this is gonna slowly turn white. Once it's completely white, like this, uh, then that means it is done, it's hard, and you're gonna get a really nice crisp design, all right? You can use wood glue to apply them with, and that's what we're gonna use today is a little bit of gr Gorilla Glue. Don't use it in your hair. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is what we're doing today, okay? So I have decided to, um, yes, I'm gonna teach you how to make wings, but I have decided to put my own twist on this decoupage sheet. So the, this is one of the newer A1 decoupage sheets. It's much larger than this, but I kind of just um, cut it down and wrapped it around my canvas. Uh, I used the this, it's just 3M7 multi-purpose spray glue. And I just sprayed it down, made sure everything was really nice and flat. The whole area was covered with glue so I didn't get any bubbles in my finish. Uh, and then we have like a really nice flat finish. So uh, you can also use, um, you can use the, the matte gel from Redesign with Prima. You can use varnish. A lot of times I use Wiesel varnish uh, and I'll put it on, set it down, and then I can seal the top, okay? But for this project, especially when you're going around corners and curves, it's really nice to use a spray glue because it just adheres to everything really well. 
<laughs> Somebody got my joke, good deal. <laughs> All right, so this just on canvas. Now, what I'm going to do, you guys can see this starting to turn white, okay? So this is starting to set up, we're getting close. I have this antique um, wood picture frame. Some of it has chipped off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this like this. I'm just showing you this for now because I'll have to secure it. Ooh. And I'm gonna put the canvas like right over the top of it. You guys see that? So it will give it kind of a 3D look, okay? Uh, instead of putting the canvas behind the frame. So I thought that would look kind of cool. Okay, let's see where our mold is at. And then we can start adding wings. So all I've, that's all I've done is just secure this to my canvas and then we are gonna give her some wings, okay? Now, you can paint the resin molds. Uh, I always recommend having some type of sandpaper. These are, this is a surf prep um, sanding pad for my surf prep. Rad pads are really nice and easy. They're thin and they're easy to hold. So you can take your mold and if it's shiny at all, you can just lightly run your sandpaper over the top of it. And then that's going to kind of open up those pores a little bit. And when you paint it, the paint's going to adhere to it really well. Okay. Uh, so you can paint them, you can do them white and then you can paint them whatever color you want. Uh, or you can add waxes to them or metallic paints. So let's see if this one's about done. You're also going to need some tape and glue. All right. So see, it's still flexible. It's not fully cured, okay? So I'm gonna give it a little bit longer. I bet if I give it like another minute, it'll be ready, all right? So I'm gonna take off my gloves and then we're gonna start making these wings. Think about, when I'm teaching you this, think about the different things that you could create using various molds, different shapes, different items. Um, like a turtle shell, like a tur the back of a turtle shell would be so cool to use various molds and kind of create some 3D art. So that's basically what we're gonna be doing today, okay? Um, I love this photo so much. It's beautiful artwork. I love the bright tones and it's just a beautiful decoupage sheet. I'm gonna turn it upside down and let's see how that's doing, a little bit more time. And then I'm going to work upside down to show you how I'm going to make these wings, okay? So I decided I'm going to give her some black wings, all right? And I might have to kind of turn sideways. So I have black that I poured, the black molds, okay? And I just did, used um, some resin dye, black resin dye, when I mix my resin together. Um, I've got a couple little blue ones that I might use just to be like an underneath look so basically what we're gonna do is just we're just gonna start layering okay this is a really this is one of the newer molds I love it I think this is a perfect wing and the nice thing about this mold is there is two so not every mold has a reverse image some molds do so look for that but this has the reverse image so this is perfect for creating wings with because then you're getting those two opposite shapes um, and you're not gonna have to flip it and not have anything on the other side, all right? So you always kind of just think about that. So let's see, this wing on the uh, left side is gonna come out this way, and then the wing on this side is gonna kind of come down, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of place them. And I don't mind if it goes over my canvas a little bit because remember we're laying that, layering that picture frame underneath. And so it's gonna give us a really nice look and feel. Okay. Put this down. And basically what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna kind of layer them and get them to where I feel it looks pretty good. Then I have my glue and I have my tape. Okay, so I'm going to slowly remove pieces and add them back and glue them and then I'm gonna tape it in place. I'm gonna leave it overnight so that all of the glue can dry before I can hang it up, okay? So let's see how good I do at this <laughs> when I'm upside down. Uh, I love these shapes a lot. These are perfect for the tops of the wings and I think I am just gonna kind of, 
I'm gonna kind of stand to the side so that I can see this and move with you. And this one's done now, so let's hurry and pop this out so it's out of the way. This one has little holes in it, but let's see if that's gonna, there we go. So isn't that a pretty design? And look how nice and crisp that is, okay? So this will be perfect. It's gonna get hard right now. It's just a little bit warm, so it's still bendable, but it's gonna get hard. If I want it to be bendable, I can just add a little bit of, of like a heat gun or um, a hairdryer, and I'll be able to mold it a little bit more to my piece. And then let's pop this bottom one out so you guys can see it. And then we'll continue on our wings. I might use these on the edges of the picture frame. Isn't that beautiful? They're really nice designs. So I just thought that would look kind of nice if I use that maybe on the edge of the picture frame. So we'll set these aside and if I use them later, that's cool. Okay, all right, so let's keep making our wings. So I just, I wanna kind of create like, you know how a wing has like almost like a shoulder to it at the top and then it thins out the bottom? I wanna kind of create that so they do look like wings. Uh, so I'm gonna use pieces like this, okay? That feels like uh, it would be the top of a wing, right? And you can kind of pull them together to form your wings, okay? So this one's gonna go out, that's gonna be perfect. And I can even kind of give the wings some more flow too. So it doesn't have to just, I can kind of bring it and then there we go. Pull that down. And I'm just barely overlapping them and kind of letting whatever show. And then when I'm all done, I can take my gold or whatever color. Let's see, that might go the wrong way too much. And then I can really highlight all of the differences in these. These are really beautiful too. These comes with the peacock ones right here. So you can see the different, oh, I'll just grab this one. Okay. So let's see. And this takes time to kind of place them. So you wanna just kind of give yourself time. You wanna let things show through. So if you don't feel like enough is showing and you kind of wanna follow your wing the curve. All right, we'll get this top. I kind of feel like that needs to be our hook and spot, right? Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty close. Maybe up just a tiny bit. I don't want it too high because we want to be able to show her body. Okay. Now that one's going the wrong way, so we don't want to use that on that side. That one is the right way. There we go. So I can kind of overlap those. You guys seeing the difference? Can you see how those are kind of coming together? And we kind of want, move that back just a little. I kind of want some of our arm to show through. I don't want to completely cover it up. Okay. Now I can choose if I want to keep the blue in there or if I want to pull out all of the blue and add like this um, black piece or I can add some a little bit of blue over on this side to kind of balance us out with our highlights. It's like putting together a puzzle, right? Okay, do you guys like it with blue or no blue? 
I'm gonna try and lift it up just a little. I kind of like the blue because I feel like it highlights it, but I could always add in paint if I wanted to. I think I'm gonna leave the blue, I kind of like it. Yes, blue. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. And just remember the layers and depth that you're creating, they're all gonna pop when you add over your top colors and such. So what I can do now, we're getting pretty close to where I wanna be. This one feels like it needs to be like a little bit longer. So I can kind of just hide that in there. Oh. Like I said, you're not gonna stack them perfect, you're just gonna get them pretty close to what you want. There, that feels pretty close to what I want, okay? All right, and now I'm gonna start glowing, okay? Then I won't actually add the color on until we're done gluing. So I'm going to um, set this aside. I'm gonna show you first and then we'll start gluing because I don't wanna run out of time. I'd rather have that set there and show you this and then we can come back. So there's a couple little products I wanted to show you as far as adding um, some depth to your molds once you get them all on there and they're totally dry, okay? You can either paint them before you apply it, you can dye your resin, or clay, you can paint them before you apply it, uh, or you can just apply it the way you want it and then come with a fine brush and paint all the details later. And then you can add on um, like a wax or a metallic or something like that to really make the details pop. So I grabbed three different metallics from Prima to show you. Um, one is Sparks, it's unicorn hair. This one is um, Chest of Gold. And then I grabbed uh, Brass Hardware. Okay, so you can use these or you can use the waxes. The waxes now come in little tubes. So I'm gonna open one up with you. What else, what other shapes do you guys think of that you can make with molds? I mean, really anything. Okay, so they're all sealed. Just take the top of your cap and poke a little hole right in it. And you don't need much wax. Just a little. I'll probably take it and wipe my finger off. So I just have a little bit on my finger. And then I can take my little mold, okay? And then I can add my metallic. See how far that goes? Just that one little bit. This is a rub and buff wax, so it's not gonna come off. It's a really, it's really cool. I really like the, um, waxes okay so that just kind of gives you a little bit of that metallic feel it gives you that depth and dimension and it's super easy to apply so that's kind of why I like dyeing them before putting them on because then all I have to do is just rub and buff some of that okay or uh, there is green this is a green color and I think that there is a brighter green color it's more of a patina color but I want to see what this looks like uh, because you can even make, oh, that's pretty, you can even make some of your wings look rusted or patinaed. You can make them look more like um, metal, which would be really cool. Then it's like a statue kind of. So I can kind of, you know, take my green. And you can make it look kind of like it has patina on it too, right? So that looks like an old metal leaf with some patina, it's kind of cool. All right, so there's a lot of different things you can do with the waxes, super easy to apply, uh, and then you have a really cool design, right? Or you can take the metallics, and I didn't grab a brush, but that's okay, I'm gonna use my finger and just show you. It's kind of the same, uh, let's use this peacock one, okay? So this is the peacock mold, and I'm just gonna dip my finger right into the lid, and then we can kind of take it right over our mold. And then you can kind of decide how much, you know, you want on there. If you want it thicker, 
If you're not loving that, you can always take a little bit of a, like a damp paper cloth, paper towel or something, and then uh, you can pull off some of that paint that you've added. So that's another advantage of using the paints versus the waxes. Okay, so now you can see all those really cool little details and give you a little bit of metallic. You can use the chalk paste to do it if you don't want any metallic, if you want a more of a matte feel, uh, but th that's just some ideas for you. Okay, once that's totally dry and once all my glue's dry and everything and I've painted everything that I want, uh, I can use a, a couple different options. So. Um, I can use varnish from Wiseal, which I really like to do. Um, it's a great sealant. It'll seal everything up. It's not going to hurt um, your decoupage because it's water-based. Or um, Prima has some 3D matte gel. So they have, um, I think they have another one that's a different sheen too. But anyways, you can use this to apply your decoupage. And you can also use this to seal up your... Um, molds for your wings and then seal your decoupage as well okay so the 3d uh, matte gel or i think there's a transfer gel too but either one would be good to do that okay all right so let's come back to gluing so we kind of have that look and these blue ones are a little bright i'm a little nervous about adding that much but like i said i can paint them down just a little bit and i don't have to worry about it so i'm going to turn this a little bit sideways so I can see where I'm gluing a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna kind of peel off our layers a little bit. Okay, and then I've got my clear Gorilla Glue right here. So I'm going to start with this one because then I kind of have the right height and I'm just basically going to take it. If you have a super shiny, like this is pretty shiny. If I'm nervous that this isn't going to stick or I'm, it's going to be really heavily used, like it's going on a drawer face or something, uh, then I would recommend just running a fine grit sandpaper, just like this that I showed you over the back side of the resin mold so that it's a little bit more matte and will give it more grip. Okay, I'm just going to set that there. I'll glue in this other one. And as soon as we start layering, then we're going to really start taping down each layer because I don't want it to slide and move and then have them go in a different position than I really wanted them to go in. Just glue this on. It takes time to make these. Um, I would always say make more molds than less. Because I always found that I'm like, oh, I just need one more. And I'd already put everything away and it was too big of a pain to pull everything out. So just wipe off your excess glue. And then I'm going to go ahead and start taping so I can keep these where I want them to be. Okay, so I'll just tape right over top of my molds. It doesn't have to be really tightly taped. I just want it to stay in place. And I don't want to put too much... Uh, over top of my lady here either okay so I feel like that's enough tape for that let's go ahead and layer on some more okay I think this one kind of came straight down right and then this one came over the top we'll double check this before we lay it down because we kind of want to yep like that okay so kind of at an angle if you do this with molds instead 
with hot glue, um, you could easily cut parts of the molds too. So if you didn't want it super thick and 3D and poking out far, then that would be another option to do is just kind of cut your molds to fit the shape and then you're not gonna have as much. I'm actually gonna a bit more down there okay perfect okay so I think I'm gonna have to get these two on there before I can take that so let's get these two on and I didn't ask I know I asked if any of you guys had done uh, art with molds but I haven't seen any so Maybe to ask one more time. Okay, put my glue. And this glue does take, you know, like I said, I just leave it overnight. I'm not gonna touch this or mess with this until tomorrow because I really wanna make sure. Okay. Let's see. I'm thinking we're gonna have to overlap like this a little bit. There we go. And if I get a little extra glue on there, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so let's take down a little bit more and then we can add in our last few feathers here. I actually think this one I want to be peeking out. That's another reason. You can use hot glue, but I like using this glue. I feel like it works better. Hot glue for me over time doesn't hold up as well. Um, it's just not as strong of a bond. So, just keep that in mind. Okay. Make sure that's all covered up. And we'll tape over the top. Okay, let's add these last two and then I'll let you guys go and I wanna see what you create. So I'll kind of do this. I'll you know double check it, look at it, make sure everything's kind of where I want it. I'll move anything or adjust it because you wanna do that before you just walk away because it's gonna dry wherever it is, that's where it's gonna be, you know? And then after I've got everything in place to where I want it, I'll just take a little bit of um, my tape and just run it over the whole top of the whole thing one more time. So that I know I have it where I want it. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I want this just a tiny bit this way. Make sure her wings are coming out of her back and not her arm. <laughs> okay, and then I'll put some tape over the top, let it totally dry, and then I will come back and add my waxes or paints or whatever I want. If I decide, hey, I don't wanna have black wings anymore, I think I want them a different color, I can paint them, no problem. Easy to do. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this was helpful. If you want to try and make some kind of 3D art, um, if you can leave it on a flat surface, if you have a vertical, turn it on its side. You'll have a lot better results, I promise, just letting gravity kind of hold down your molds and letting that glue just put everything in place. Okay. Okay, I feel like she's all bandaged, bandaged up. <laughs> so we're gonna let that be, let it dry. I know it's kind of wild looking right now. <laughs> and then tomorrow we will color it. So if you guys have questions after, after you've seen all of this or if you're watching the replay and have questions, um, go ahead and ask me and then I'll be happy to answer. You can find me on Apple Blossom Way and uh, all of my other classes and techniques and everything else. So. Hope you guys have a wonderful um, day. We'll see you soon.